Well, last time I made a one glass of our glorious leader, our god emperor, our hero that we need but do not deserve, Donald Trump. But today we're going to portray his biggest adversary, Angela Merkel. First of her name, rightful ruler of European kingdoms, inviter of migrants, Mutti of Germany, the climate chancellor and protector of the realm. Today I'm going to take you through the techniques that I use to make these kinds of surface engravings on glass. I think it's kind of an intermediate level of engraving because we're not just doing simple shapes. Uh, we're actually trying to capture the likeness of a person on glass. But I can say it's actually much simpler than it sounds because I have no artistic talent and even I can pull it off. The secret is cheating. Uh. Do you remember in kindergarten when you had these coloring books where you needed to connect the dots and follow the line and then color the picture in? If you mastered that technique, then you can do what I'm gonna do as well. If you haven't and still color outside of the lines and over the lines, well, I hope you find this video entertaining anyways. But if you went to art school and know how to draw or know anything about shading, then what the fuck are you doing here watching my sorry ass? Go watch Leslie Pike's excellent engravings. But how exactly are we going to cheat? So what I've done, I printed out some templates of Angela Merkel about the size of our glass that we're gonna engrave on. So we're gonna select one of these for our template for the engraving. I think I'm going to use one of these in the negative because there's no positivity allowed in my channel. What I'm going to do is cut it out and then stick it inside of the glass. What the fuck? Is there some sticky shit on this? I'm going to use this sticky stuff that is uh, used for sticking stuff on whiteboards or on the wall. I like to use this because it's, uh, it's malleable. You can move it around when it's on the glass and it's reusable as well. As this wine glass is actually a little bit curved, it means that you can't actually put this flat piece of paper inside of the glass perfectly like you could do in a, in a, like a drinking glass like this because it has straight walls so it just goes around in the cylinder quite well but in this you have to leave a little gap in between the glass surface and the actual paper inside so there's a gap in there I try to get it as close as I, as I can so I'm crumpling the paper a little bit, but it's fine if it's a little bit farther away. To reach deeper into the glass, I'm gonna use this pen to push down the sticky stuff onto the glass. Because my fingers are not that long to reach there, so this will help me. Now we have this negative image inside of the glass and when we start the engraving we can just follow these dark lines and keep in mind that we're actually like painting with white so we're turning this negative image to the positive Wait Shit There goes my negativity I just turned this negativity into positivity Is this how politics works? Now we actually have all the pre-work done, so we can start engraving. For that I'm going to change locations, uh, because I don't want to do it in my kitchen. It's quite dusty and can get quite messy. So this is the place where I engrave my work. I use these really cheap uh, Chinese manicure and pedicure tools. These are really cheap, like 7 bucks a piece. I have a couple of them for ease of uh, changing, changing tools if I need to. Uh, the actual bits that I use are these really cheap Chinese ones as well. I have these ones and I bought several packages of, 
of several types for different kind of work that, that I'm doing. I also have this magnifying glass with the light on. First for the outlines, I'm going to use this really small one millimeter ball. So we're going to start doing the outlines. When you're drawing on a glass, always try to look straight perpendicular because here's the line that I did on the outside. But if we turn the glass even a little bit, you can see that the line kind of moves because the paper is not actually right, right against the glass. So what I'm done now is just make the basic outlines of the most prominent uh, lines. So for the more detailed lines, I'm going to use this conical tip with a really sharp tip on the end. So I can get into the more detailed lines of the eyes where I can't make any mistakes because you can't really erase uh, the lines that you have made. So need to be really careful, but still the technique is the same, just follow the lines. So at this point, actually we're getting into the details of the nose. So I made these like outline lines and where there's really dark parts and just coloring in fully, just going in there. But the, where there's like dotted lines and like shading, and I'm gonna imitate this dotting with my tool as well. I'm just gonna puncture like that. And on this part, you kind of have these wrinkles. I've also printed out this really large image of Angela Merkel. And here you can see all the details that you actually finally need to get to. On the glass, I'm gonna imitate the direction that the wrinkles are going to. So I'm going to do lines on the, on the same line going down from the nose. In these really messy parts, like over here, it's like just white and black just uh, mixed together. So it, you don't really need to follow this pattern exactly, you just kind of need to imitate it to get the similar pattern. Because it's it gets really hard to actually understand what you have you have engraved and what you haven't because turning it into white and you move it around just a little bit you can't even actually see which part is which anymore What's that? What the hell was that? Uh, let's
that's what I get for buying cheap tools. What the hell was that? Well, it makes some more noise now, but it still works. Now I'm moving into this eye area under the eye and we have this kind of network of wrinkles. So we're trying to actually keep really pronounced white lines in there. So we're gonna color in all the black ones, but just keep a gap between, just color in right here, gap and over there. So you have this gap of not colored in in there. So it's really difficult to do because you're coloring in more than you're not coloring in, but just try to keep that that gap in, in your coloring so you can actually get this pronounced darker lines in there. You can do it afterwards with polishing, but it's, it's better to do it uh, to be careful now. And again we have this chin area that has these lines like the little wrinkles and the details of the of the skin so I'm just trying to not do it exactly like that because it's kind of impossible but leave just little holes that haven't uh, engraved in like this this imitate this white dots over there that's actually going to be these darker dots over here. So I'm just imitating this in, in, in like negative to get this pattern. It, it doesn't need to be exact, but it needs to be similar. And on the same line like this goes down and a little bit to the side on this side. So try to keep it in a similar pattern. So around this really dark area, I could actually use uh, a bigger bit to do this uh, faster uh, because it's quite a large area. Uh, it takes a lot of time to do it with this uh, small tool. But I like to actually keep this small tool because then I 
kind of keep the same stroke uh, style. I just take my time and master through it and do all of this dark area. That's quite quite uniform, but there are some small details in there as well. Really, really small light specks. And actually this smaller tool, like it's, it's harder to do a uniform coloring. So you, you keep these uh, small specks in there actually. And, and actually it's uh, re really nice when it goes over to this area. I don't have to change the tool to do these details in, in here, in the eye. I usually like to just keep one really, really detailed tool, even though it's not as efficient in larger areas like this. But I, yeah, that's what I do. So, as you can see now, I hope you can see, that this is not completely uniform, there's like speckles in there. So these strokes that you do here, uh, gives you the texture that you, that you can keep. So now we're actually getting close to this eye, it has a lot of detail, and this detail is really important to preserve, because the eye is kind of the one of the most important parts of the face. So here you need to be really, really careful to do the details because the eye is actually the paper inside of the glass is the farthest away because this has the, a lot of curvature in the glass. So there's like a lot of distance between the paper and the, and the glass surface. I'm putting the tip of my tool over there and just moving it like a little bit you can see how much it actually moves uh, relative to the background so you need to keep everything really really constant when you're doing these details because let's say i'm doing this detail here and here but then i move the glass a little bit like this and i'm doing that detail and when i move it back this they're not like in the same uh, relative space anymore so you need to keep it really, really constant and really careful over here, uh, especially in this in this uh, eye area and maybe mouth and, and nose and uh, these these areas that really need the details to be exactly at a relative distance to each other. We're getting close to this hairline over here. There's a lot of uh, single hairs. It's better to be safe and leave it a little bit wider 
and afterwards uh, when we take this paper out and put the darker colored fabric in we can actually go closer and and do all the small details and narrow them down and afterwards we're gonna move on to the hairline this doesn't need to be exact because this is not like the real defining feature of of uh, her face but it needs to be quite close to the style of hair so just keep this uh, separation of hair over here and uh, little, little strands of hair coming down and here these darker uh, lines of hair just do kind of randomly but uh, in keeping of the style that that's in here so the really important parts are the eyes, the nose, the mouth uh, to keep the detail uh, kind of exact because these are the really important features of the face that makes Angela Merkel Angela Merkel so everything else is kind of approximation of, of, of her features Seems like this tool is fucked. It seems like there's some grime or something in the bearing, and it kind of the tip keeps jumping randomly when I'm when I'm doing it. This little wiggle is normal, but uh, uh, because you keep the pressure the same, but it kind of when the pressure is there, it kind of jumps little bit so I don't like that at all so I'm gonna change to another tool and yeah maybe that's what you get for buying these really cheap tools I should buy a new proper one but yeah maybe I just buy a new, another <laughs> cheap one so fuck it let's take another one so let's hope I won't break this one Yeah, it already sounds better. I stopped there because I noticed one thing. As you see, the tip of the tool wobbles quite a lot. And it's actually caused by it being not aligned in the collet. So I think it's a little bit too far out as well. So I'm gonna just Yeah, push it back in and we tighten. There now, see it doesn't wobble anymore. Maybe another new reason why to buy a more expensive tool.
I think we're done with uh, all the detailing on, on the first go. So we got the hair and the nose, the eyes, the skin, generally the tones, all the details of the, of the skin. And actually we can't actually see very well what's, what's going on, we kind of just try to texture. But now what we're going to do is take this off. Uh, but before you take it off, make sure you got all the details, you got both eyes, everything from from bottom to top, everything you got it, because if you take it out, it's really difficult to put the paper back in uh, the way it was before. With the dark background, you can see really see the details that you, that you made. And it kind of looks like Angela Merkel, does it? Yeah? So we have a little bit toning, uh, like shading already, and it uh, it's from the density of of uh, using the diamond, but all of these dots are kind of the same uh, shade of gray or white. So the shading comes from how dense this less dense strokes over here and really dense strokes over here. So. From farther away, it's this seems darker than this one. So actually, I could leave it like this and uh, call it done. But I really don't like uh, that there's like some areas that have no color done in at all, and some areas actually are a little bit too bright. Uh, I'm gonna try uh, to use some. Uh, uh, sandpaper bits that I bought and some uh, polishing wheels. This is just rolls of sandpaper around the like uh, rod. So now this part is still, you have, still have the tones in there, but it's not completely transparent if you see. So it, the head is not see-through completely, so I like to have that. So maybe I will now use this 1600 grit uh, bit, so to get some lighter parts and maybe maybe take some edges off there so i'm going to consult the printout the large printout that i have with the final shading so i think i i need some uh, better shading in the chin area because it goes gradually and there's a darker section just under the chin and then it's a little bit lighter again so i try to do it with the with the sandpaper wheel. So I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna add a little more detail with the diamond on these really empty areas.
So yeah, fuck it. I think it's done. So here we go. Our orange buddy has gained a trembling friend. Now let's see how do they got along. Due to their stark differences in policy, uh, I've selected white wine for Mr. Trump to keep all the Mexicans out and red wine for uh, Madame Merkel because she's not afraid to color mix. taste how their politics compare. Mm. 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 Yes, uh, quite different, but equally shit. That's it for this political adventure. If you want to see more, don't forget to like this and subscribe to my channel. Also comment down below who do you think deserves to collect dust alongside Trump and Merkel. Maybe next time I will do Putin, but if you have other ideas, let me know. That's it for now, see you next time. Shit. Brush, brush throws. Fuck this word. Now fuck off.